Did you see those rocks? Yeah, I mean those national championship rings. Those things are boulders. They're massive. They're huge. But who can blame Georgia for celebrating big and getting the very largest monstrosities that you could ever find or have created to celebrate their national championship? It's been 41 years. Welcome into the Voice of College Football as we check out Georgia's spring game, the annual G-Day game at Sanford Stadium in Athens on Saturday. Right here at the Voice of College Football, please subscribe, share these videos out on social media, and hit the like button as well. Let's get this out of the way first and foremost. This is Stetson Bennett's team, period. There should be no question, no argument, no debate, no doubt. Stetson Bennett's team. Not because he handed the ball off 65 times a game and threw eight passes and won a national championship based on a rushing attack and mostly a defense. No, he played excellent quarterback for much of the season. Most of the season, aside from a couple mistakes in the SEC championship game, he was a top, top, top flight quarterback, actually near elite quarterback most of the time, most of the season. I've been critical of the mistakes that he's made in big situations and big games in the past, but he proved it against Michigan and against Alabama. Look at the adversity he faced against the Tide, and he fought back, and he engineered and led those touchdown drives to take the lead and win the game against Alabama, first and foremost. And then just flat out statistically, he was the number three quarterback in the nation in QBR behind the two guys that were invited to the Heisman ceremony in New York, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, Stetson Bennett, number three in the country in QBR. He statistically put up an outstanding elite season. And on top of that, just watch him play and understand that adding to the arm strength that is good enough, the accuracy that's good enough, the mobility that's better than good enough, he now has the confidence and swag to know I've done it. There's no situation I can face that I can't overcome. Stetson Bennett's the quarterback for Georgia in 2022. All right, who's going to be the quarterback in 2023? You've got three quarterbacks in Carson Beck, Brock Vandegriff, and Gunnar Stockton, who are more talented, at least based on the high school evaluation, than Stetson Bennett. And it would be conventional knowledge or wisdom to think that one of them's taking off after spring practice. One of them has to enter the transfer portal. However, they all know that Stetson Bennett only has one more season. And Stockton and Vandegrift are new to the system. And of course, uh, Carson Beck seems to be in line for the number two job. So the race for number two is crucial because, of course, you're always only one play away from being the starting quarterback. And number two, you set yourself in position to be the guy in 2023. So I'm not making a prediction on anybody entering the transfer portal. I don't do that. All these guys are currently Georgia Bulldogs. No speculation here on who's leaving or when. But don't be surprised if all three stay. All right, let's get to the other aspects of the team that stand out. The wide receivers are better than they've been in recent Georgia past. That's always been a good position, but not as great or elite as the running backs, the offensive line, or any level on the defense. But they've gotten to a place where they are really good at wide receiver, despite losing their two most productive wideouts, of course, in Jermaine Burton to Alabama and George Pickens to the NFL. Lad McConkey's proven enough. A.D. Mitchell in big games and big spots. Dominic Blaylock is a guy that uh, has had his injury issues and has been largely forgotten, but he made a couple big plays in the spring game. The wide receiver position has reached the level of the rest of the positions from a talent perspective on this football team. And Arian Smith's a really good player as well. And we're not even mentioning the waves of talent coming in in the 22 class. They are loaded at wide receiver. Just got to find the go-to guy, the number one, two, and three guys, which I believe would be McConkey, Mitchell, and Blaylock. We shall see. The reason there shouldn't be concern about the wide receivers, though, 
is because of the tight end room. It's the best in college football. It's not even close. And these tight ends are not conventional tight ends. They're basically weapons in the passing game. We know Brock Bowers. We didn't have to see him in the spring game. He didn't play. He doesn't need to play. He's fine. He just scored 15 touchdowns last season and proved to be the best tight end in college football. And playing behind him, now we've got Eric Gilbert, who was supposed to be the best tight end in college football coming in as a high school senior to LSU in 2020. And he caught 35 passes and was the all-SEC freshman tight end. And, of course, now he's had his off-the-field issues. Hopefully he's straightened those out and he's focused and ready to play. And he's trimmed up to be less of a tight end, per se, and more of a guy that splits out. It's an unbelievable tight end room. And it also includes Darnell Washington, who did not play in the spring game. Okay, now to the running back room. James Cook and Zamir White are gone. That's okay. Kenny McIntosh was capable, more than capable last year. I like what I see out of Deshaun Edwards. We saw him break free uh, several times in the spring game on Saturday. But in particular, I know that the Georgia running back approach is typically not to have a superstar, not since the days necessarily of Todd Gurley, pretty much all by himself with Keith Marshall as a compliment, or more recently, Sony Michelle, DeAndre Swift, or Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, uh, Sony Michelle as a combo, uh, but more recently playing three and four guys. But if somebody's going to break out and be a superstar, Kendall Milton is that guy. He just is that guy. As both rusher and pass receiver, he's impressive and could be the star of the group and the guy that really takes over the room. All right, now let's get to the defense. (laughs) They lose a ridiculous amount of talent. It's crazy, the talent that they lose, and we're going to see it on display in a couple weeks at the NFL draft. Along with Alabama, Georgia has the best defensive talent in the country. Sorry, Clemson, you have a great defensive line, probably the best, but in taking into account all three levels, it's Alabama and Georgia. And despite losing all, All those players to the NFL draft, Georgia is still right there with Bama. Okay, here are the concerns. The special, unique qualities of the players that were lost. Lewis Seen, for example, alpha dog, hitter, enforcer guy. So there's other guys in the secondary that have the same amount of talent, speed, ability, all that. But are they that guy? N'Kobe Dean was that guy in the mold of Roquan Smith. Do they have another guy, alpha dog, that's going to step up, be a leader, be tenacious, rally the troops, and just refuse to be denied? N'Kobe Dean, that guy. At cornerback, to a lesser extent, Darian Kendrick, four picks last year, coming in from Clemson, asserting himself as the number one corner, that guy. I think they've got a good transition there in Keeley Wingo. Of course, he the star of the national championship game and icing the game with a pick six. Trevon Walker, Quay Walker going to be missed, of course, along the defensive front. And then again, in terms of having guys that from a star standpoint on the recruiting rankings can be replaced, but are their replacements, replacements going to be that guy? Of course, Jordan Davis is the star of the defense. And then Devontae Wyatt probably played just as well down the stretch and became a force that is going to be plucked off the board at the NFL draft quickly, Devontae Wyatt. So two monsters in the middle. Nobody in college football had two guys like Davis and Wyatt. Can they be replaced? Well, we've got... Jalen Carter's a star. He's a more athletic version of the guys I just named. You've got Zion Logue. It's time for him to step up and be a force. Nolan Smith, of course, has already proven to be a great player in, uh, at this level. Jamon Dumas-Johnson, he will probably have to be the guy in regards to leadership, calling plays, getting guys lined up in the right position at linebacker. Robert Beal has been a playmaker in the past as well. And again, Ringo is the number one cornerback. 
My look at Georgia football following the spring game, it's intriguing because the waves of talent are monumental, but there is separation when it comes to guys that play big and big games, are leaders, are just difference makers. And Georgia still has some of those guys, but they've got to replace guys, and we don't quite know if they have the replacements at that insane elite level. My thoughts on Georgia football. Would love to see what you have following the G-Day game right here at the Voice of College Football. SEC.